Madam Chief Executive, you've had a very tumultuous term in office with many unprecedented challenges from anti-government protests to a global pandemic. Looking back, how would you describe the legacy of your administration? The term of five years uh, is one of the most difficult uh, since reunification in 1997. But we now have a plucked a very serious loophole, and that is until the enactment of the Hong Kong National Security Law, we have absolutely no legislation, no implementation agent and uh, policies to safeguard national sovereignty, security and development interests. But now we have the national security law. It has given us that very firm foundation to move forward. I become more optimistic about Hong Kong's future because we are now brought back to the right track of one country, uh, two systems. As for myself, I have this very strong sense of gratitude to the central government because when Hong Kong faced such unprecedented challenges, the central government has given me absolute support, clear guidance, and the trust. And finally, I, I also feel very grateful to the people of Hong Kong. The majority of Hong Kong people are still patriotic. Uh, they don't want to see the erosion of one country, two systems. There's a lot of bias and prejudice against one country, two systems. How would you respond to those voices and allegations? If you look at today's uh, geopolitical uh, situation, one will easily understand that there is always this uh, force trying to suppress uh, our country because our country is growing, is developing, is becoming more influential on the global scene. But the second reason is of because of the lack of understanding of one country, two systems. I would uh, confess as much needs to be done because, as you pointed out, there's a lot of bias. But the government does have a role because of uh, inadequate education, communication and publicity about the fundamentals of one country, two systems. And I hope soon after the COVID-19 uh, epidemic is over, we will continue this program of inviting uh, visitors from abroad and from the mainland to come to Hong Kong under a sponsored visitor program. Normally they stay for one week. We will uh, arrange them to see the various institutions, including the uh, Legislative Council members, the, the ICAC, the Department of Justice, and go to some activity so that they have a feel of the life in Hong Kong. And once they are here for a period, I doubt anybody will could continue to complain that Hong Kong has no freedom. <laughs> Hong Kong is one of the freest uh, cities in the world. You have proposed the Northern Metropolis Development Strategy. How will this help serve Hong Kong's long-term interests and how will it help Hong Kong find more synergy with the Greater Bay Area and the overall national strategy? Hong Kong needs more uh, land. Uh, Hong Kong needs more connectivity with the uh, mainland of China, uh, particularly with Shenzhen. Innovation and technology uh, needs a lot of support. In the northern metropolis, we are able to assemble a large area, about 240 hectares of land, to develop a sentient technopole. And in terms of housing, uh, by integrating the various development areas and being more decisive in resuming uh, private land, including agricultural land, we expect to see more housing supply. So um, in many respects, the northern metropolis will satisfy Hong Kong's future needs.